Welcome to the second video of the NCRM online resource on time diary data and research. In this video, I will draw on my recent research on family time and digital devices to further exemplify the uniqueness of time use measures that can be constructed with time diary data. The research I will discuss has been published in the Journal of Marriage and Family in 2019. And the lead author was my colleague, Kilian Mullen, who is also a time use expert. So the starting point of this research were the ongoing concerns surrounding the widespread diffusion of mobile devices and their impact on face-to-face -face interactions and quality time. Several studies had sought to contribute to the ongoing debate about the impact of technological change on family time, which is very often assumed to be negative. So we had small scale studies who found mixed evidence, but also lacked generalizability. Multidisciplinary social surveys have sought to include screen time measures in questionnaires, but these do suffer from a set of drawbacks. To start with, such surveys often rely on parent proxies to measure children's screen time. As you can imagine, this is likely to produce very inaccurate estimates of screen time. And at the same time, such survey questions treat screen time as a main activity. So they disregard the fact that browsing the web or using social media often takes place during other activities, such as seating or traveling. And this actually renders the calculation task for respondents even more difficult. Time diary studies had shown that family time had increased over time but there was no available research on screens and the nature of family time that was used in these studies was actually unidimensional. Basically, these studies focused on the time parents report spending with children. So they actually used the co-presence column that I showed in video one. Our research took a different approach. We produced different measures of family time using three diary columns that you can see noted in this picture. We use the main activity column, the location column, and the co-presence column. We drew on the two latest time use surveys uh, as we were interested to conduct a comparison over time. These surveys were household surveys. This means that they collected diaries from everyone aged eight and over in the household. So we started by matching the diaries of different family members. And we actually constructed five different measures of family time. An overall measure of family time measured the time that parents and children spend together at the same location. We constructed this one solely by looking at the location diary column. We then used info from the co-presence column to decompose this measure into two other measures. We constructed a measure of co-present time, which refers to the time children reported being co-present with their parents. And we also constructed an alone together time measure, which refers to the time children do not report being co-present with their parents. This decomposition had not been done by previous research. We also constructed a shared activity measures, 
which refers to the time family members were doing the same activities while being at the same location. For example, all member, when all members were in the family home and they were watching TV. We specifically examined share time in three activities of interest as well. And those were eating, television viewing, and leisure. This is a table from our paper that you can fully access online. You can see that total, if, total family time increased from 2000 to 2015. However, if you look at trends in co-present and alone together time, you will see that this increase was due to an increase in alone together time. That is, time that children and parents were at the same location, but they were not interacting as they reported being alone. This suggests that an increase of total family time found in different uh, pieces of research does not necessarily entail more interactions between family members or higher quality time. We also found that contrary to discussions in the media, family time in shared activities has been remarkably stable over time. While time in the three activities of interest, eating, television, and leisure, has only shown very minor changes. We then asked whether mobile devices have colonized family time, so to speak. To do this, we use the smartphone diary column that I showed you in video one. This column was only available in the 2014-2015 survey. So we were only able to conduct a cross-national analysis to explore the presence of smartphones in different aspects of family time. And so we were able to document exactly this with our time diary data. This table shows estimates from different types of time. And it's the time of information that was missing in existing evidence on screen time and family time. Our paper discussed that the presence of smartphones may actually lower quality family time by potentially making interactions between family members less satisfying. However, we also emphasized that we need more information on how smartphones are actually used during family time. As the effects may be different, if say they're used to contact other family members or watch videos together. I have used this short example to show that the use of location and who with columns allowed us to capture varying levels of togetherness among family members that were not possible by conventional social surveys. And the diaries provide a more comprehensive picture of internet-enabled mobile device use. I would argue that the device use column is more in line with real-life use of screens and it recognizes that internet use takes place as a background activity nowadays. So if you're interested in time use research, I invite you to engage with literature that has used time diaries to explore innovations brought about by this method.